information in the natural law theory of information includes five levels – statistics, syntax, semantics, pragmatics and apobatics. I will little, uh, explain it a little bit more. Here we see the five levels. The statistic level is if we, for example, would count all the letters of a book. That's what we do in statistics. And if we uh, look at the book, we see there are many sentences and uh, they are written in a special syntax. And that is the second level of information. But the most important thing is the uh, Semantics, what does it mean? We come to the f fourth level of information, it is pragmatics. We have se seen a few uh, machines which are working under the condition of information and that is uh, the pragmatic level, the action. And the highest level of information is the purpose, the result and the name I gave it is apobatics. So, if we find in an unknown system all the five levels of information, then we are sure uh, it is a system with information. There are many definitions possible, but we can do it. But let me say the definition domain A is the right one in a scientific way. In, uh, in the domain of A, we see syntax, semantics, pragmatics, apobatics, and also statistics. All the other cases, uh, we don't find all the five levels. And therefore, we are outside of the de definition domain of information. Now, let's have a few examples uh, and we will make a decision. Are we inside or outside of the definition domain of information? On this picture, we see all the letters of our al alphabet and also the numbers. The Swedish photographer, Kjell Sandvit was it, he saw the letter F on the wing of a butterfly and was amazed. And so he took a microscope to look at the wing of a butterfly to find other letters, but he couldn't find. And so he was looking uh, to other uh, butterflies and you see the solution here. After a long time of 15 years and traveling among 30 countries, he had found the complete alphabet. My question is, is this information in the case as I have defined it before? The answer is no. We see the letters, but they have no meaning no pragmatics, and so on. Uh, there are only ornaments on the wings of butterflies, and there are many ornaments on the wing. So we can say, in this case, we are outside of the definition domain of information. Another example, if we look to a star or to a galaxy, in normal speech we say, we get more information about the system. But in my definition of information, is it information or is it not? We don't see letters, we don't see a syntax or semantics and so on. So we are very clear outside of the definition domain. Another example is this information, what we see here. We don't see a letter, we don't see all the other levels and therefore it is also outside of the definition domain of information. But now there is a name here with letters and a meaning and so we can say this is information. Now I have another example. Could this be information, this signs what you see here on this picture? At the moment we cannot say what it is. But let me give the solution. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. The darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. 
and he separated the light from the darkness. So God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. You see, there's a special code system and we can translate the complete Bible in this way. So therefore we can say this example, we are inside of the definition domain. Let me give another example. Here you see a tablet on the uh, Pioneer space uh, vehicle with this picture. Is it information or not? Now, normally we would say uh, this picture gives information if there are living beings outside of uh, the Earth system, they can conclude that there are uh, people living in another part of the universe. That was the idea behind this. But we don't see letters and not the five levels of information and therefore we can say we are very clear outside of the definition domain. You see, it is very easy to find out if a system is inside or outside of the definition domain. Now let me come to the laws of nature about information. There are ten laws of nature about information. The first one is anything material such as physical chemical processes cannot create something non-material. A very important law of nature about information. Let me come to the second one. Information is a non-material fundamental entity and not a property of matter. In many books nowadays you find the idea that information is a part of matter. That is a wrong idea. The third one is, information requires a material medium for storage and transmission. The fourth one, information cannot originate in statistical processes. Number five, there can be no information without a code. We have seen it in the examples I showed to you. In all cases, there was a code system. Number six, all codes result from an intentional choice and agreement between sender and recipient. Number seven, the determination of meaning for and from a set of symbols is a mental process that requires intelligence. That's what we see in all cases, in all known systems. Number eight, there can be no new information with an intelligent, purposeful sender. That's what we observe in all systems which are known. There is a sender and also one or more recipients. And we see all the five levels are important on both sides, on the sender side and also on the recipient side. For example, on the level of semantics, you see the communi uh, communicated ideas on the sender side and on the recipient side is a question, is this meaning understood? Number nine, any given chain of information can be traced back to an intelligent source. Let me give an example to understand it a little bit better. If you drive with a car, and you listen to your radio, is the radio the source of information? No, not the radio. Is uh, the antenna the source of information? No. If you trace back, you come to a sender, to an author who gave the information. And that's what we see in all cases. In most cases, we cannot see the sender. For example, if you go to a library and you see thousands of books in the library, very seldom you will see the sender, the author of the books. 
nevertheless it is information. Number ten, information comprises the non-material foundation for all technological systems, works of art, biological systems. Now let's have a look about information once again. Because there are so many other definitions about information, you will find it in many textbooks. Here you see a thoughts of a philosopher and he said everything in the universe is information. So that's his definition, definition of information. Or let me come to another definition. You see here a systems with a code. That's the definition of Shannon. Shannon is not interested in the meaning of the code. His question is only are there letters or numbers? There can be random numbers or whatever. Everything like this is information in his definition. Now let me come to my definition of information. So we see here is a complete universe. You see systems without code, for example stars and snow flocks and, and crystals. You see random characters which are also outside of the definition domain. And you see here proteins and cars and so on. We say that is specified complexity, but it's not information. The field, the red one, that's my definition of information. It is always possible to find out if a system is within or outside of the definition domain. Now let's have a look to the different kinds of definition of information. One philosopher said everything is information, the advantage is done if he makes such a definition. Uh, the disadvantage is not for practical use. Shannon, he made a mathematical theory of information. The advantage is measuring of information by formulas. But the disadvantage is only valid on the level of statistics, not more. Dembski has defined the specified complexity. It is a very good idea the advantage is very to understand systems which are made by intelligence. The disadvantage from Dembski is no clear definition of the domain, the domain, no strong conclusions are possible. Therefore, I have another definition of information. Law of nature information theory advantages are allows to formulate laws of nature. First time that laws of nature are formulated for a non-material entity and therefore strong conclusions are possible, the disadvantage is no mathematical formulation. Let's have a look to biological systems. Does the code found within DNA fit into the definition domain of information? That is a very important question. The decoded portion of the DNA contains words that are three letters long. Their three letters represent specific amino acids. Adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine. There are four letters in the genetic code. On this picture you see the 20 amino acids and the genetic code. One word has three genetic letters. It is a ternary code with three letters in the word. There are four different letters in the genetic alphabet. You see here the chemical formulas of the four letters and once again the DNA molecule. In the DNA molecule we find the highest density of information. If I would have a pinhead of this material, the DNA molecule, my question is how many books, as you see here in the bookstore, we can store in one pinhead? I have calculated this and it's amazing how much books are, uh, we can store in one pinhead. 
the distance from the Earth to the Moon, there are uh, 384,000 kilometers. The pile of books we can store in one pinhead is 500 times higher. That is the highest, the highest density we know. Another example, I have a very small Bible. Yesterday I said my heaviest Bible is 11 kilogram. My smallest Bible is only a slide. And if I, and this slide uh, contains the complete Bible. And I have compared the density of information of this slide with the density of information in the DNA molecule. And we see here on this picture, in the DNA molecule, the information is 7.7 .7 million million times more in density. So it is very, very, a very high density in information. All the proteins we have in our body, there are 50,000 different proteins, and all the proteins contain amino acids. Here, for example, the human insulin has 51 amino acids in two chains. Now, we are familiar with the laws of nature about information. We know the definition domain. We have learned to see if we are inside or outside of the definition domain. And now we can come to the conclusions. And you will see there are very, very strong conclusions which we can make from the laws of nature about information. 